Hi, and welcome to Meetings and Math. We're here looking at s solving special systems of linear equations. Our essential question is, what happens to the solution of a system when the lines are parallel? And what happens when the lines completely overlap, making them the same line? Today, you will need your Jaguar Jots on section 5.4, a pen or a pencil. You might find a highlighter helpful, a calculator to keep things moving along quickly, your problem solving skills, your bright ideas and your determination. So let's get started. In our first case, we're going to look at these two equations, y equals x and y equals x plus 3. And so we want to begin by graphing. So the first thing we want to look at, of course, is what is the slope and what is our y-intercept so that we can graph it. So we'll graph the first one in green. So m is equal to 1 because remember when there's not anything in front of the x, it is 1. And since there's nothing after it, b is equal to 0. So we're going to start here at 0. And then we're going to go up 1 and over 1. And we're going to continue to do that to make our line. So then let's take our ruler and make our straight line that goes on from there. And there's our line. And now let's do that with the second one. y equals x plus 3. m is equal to 1 and b is equal to 3. So this time we start at the y-intercept at 3. And again, our slope is 1. So it's up 1 over 1. Get a few of those in place. And draw our lines. So the first thing we need to do is we need to look at their slopes. And what do we notice? We notice that the slopes are equal. Or I hope that you notice that the slopes are equal. And I hope that you remember that that would mean that the slopes, when the slopes are equal, that the lines are parallel. So when the slopes are equal, the lines are parallel. And now we look at the lines. If you look at the lines, the lines are not going to intersect. So by the definition of parallel and also by looking at our picture, we can see that the lines are not going to intersect. And now let's just pull that thread a little bit more we know that the solution of a system means the point where they intersect. Well, if these are parallel lines and they're never going to intersect, that means that there's never going to be a point where they intersect, which means that parallel lines don't have a solution. And so that is what we were looking for this whole time, which is follow, graph the following lines and determine the solution of the system. In this case, since they're parallel lines, they're not going to have a solution because they never intersect. So the lines will never intersect, so they cannot have a solution. So then what's our answer? Parallel lines have no solution. Remember that those three little dots means therefore. When we see the graph, it's really obvious that there's no, nothing that's overlapping, nothing that crosses, no solution. So let's look at case number two. Examine the situation. Take the line 3x plus y equals 5 and rename the line by multiplying the equation by 2. So first we're going to complete the table of values and we're going to leave the shaded column blank for now. So what we want to do is we want to just take 3x plus y equals 5 and what is y when x is equal to negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So what we want to do is substitute in x equals negative 1 for 3x plus y equals 5. So every time I see an x, I'm going to put negative 1. And now we want to go ahead and solve this for y. So 3 times negative 1 is a negative 3. Add 3 to both sides. So y is equal to 8. So we have the ordered pair, negative 1, 8. So we want to continue to do this for 0, 1, 2, and 3. So go ahead and pause this and do the rest of those for 0, 1, 2, and 3.
So now we have all of the values when we had those x values. We now know what y is equal to. So these are those ordered pairs on that graph. So now we're going to go ahead and we want to rename this line by multiplying it by 2. So remember, so long as we multiply and do the same thing to both sides of the equation, we have an equivalent equation. So now let's go ahead and take our 3x plus y equals 5 and multiply both sides by 2. 3 times 2, that gets us to 6x. And 2 times y is 2y. And 5 times 2 is 10. So we have this new equivalent equation that says 6x plus 2y equals 10. So in the shaded column, what we're going to do is exactly what we did before. So we're going to use this table and we are going to complete the table of values using our same inputs. So we have 6x plus 2y equals 10. And now what we want to do is when x is equal to negative 1, we're going to input that into our new equation, which is 6x plus 2y equals 10. And we created that by multiplying by 2. So let's go ahead and do that. Every time we see an x, we're going to put in negative 1. So 6 times negative 1 plus 2y equals 10. So 6 times negative 1 is a negative 6 plus 2y equals 10. So we'll add 6 to both sides. 2y is equal to 16. Divide both sides by 2. And we get y equals 8. So our new output is going to be 8. So what I want you to do is I want you to complete this now for 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then we'll come back and we'll compare our original outputs to our new output. Okay, so now that you've done that, let's go ahead and I'm going to show it to you kind of in double speed what you should have done. So there you have all of these where you substituted in your x value and then you solved for your y value. And so hopefully what you notice is that all of your outputs were exactly the same. Your inputs are the same and your outputs are the same. So even though the equations look different, they are the same. It's kind of like your name. Sometimes people might call you different names depending on what group you're with. Your parents might call you one name and your friends might call you something else. Or for example, my name is Mrs. DeFuro when I'm in the classroom, but when I'm at home, my kids call me mom, right? I'm still the same person, but I have different names in different situations. And so in one name, this situation in this line is 3x plus y equals 5, but in another situation, in a formal situ situation maybe, this is called 6x plus 2y is equal to 10. And maybe it has a different name. But in both situations, you're going to put in the same inputs and get out exactly the same outputs. Another way for us to look at it is if we were to finally graph these ordered pairs. So here I have them graphed for us. The first one, I have graphed the non-shaded one. So if we now go through and we graph the shaded one on top of the unshaded one, you're going to see something kind of cool happens. So I'll make sure I use a different color so it shows up clearly for us. So let's graph the point 1, negative 8. So if I graph one, negative, excuse me, negative 1, 8, so backwards 1 and up 8, I end up right here. It's on top of it. 0, 5 ends up right here, right on top of it. Over 1, up 2 ends up on top of it. And so you can see I end up with those same points no matter where I'm at. And so that means it's the same line. 
So what we notice is sometimes in the in different cases, we have things that end up being the same thing. In this case, we have infinite solutions. These lines lay one on top of the other, and so every point is the same. And so what would we, what would we say about the solution? We would say that it has infinite solutions. And so that would be our answer. So when you end up with something like this, we would have infinite solutions. So how in the world do you figure out which one's which? Well, it gets down to what does your answer look like? And we'll talk about that in just a second. But those are the two big ideas that we're going to look at. So let's look at this activity. You invest $500 for equipment to make dog backpacks. Each backpack is going to cost you $15 for materials. You will see each back, so I should say sell, each backpack for $15. When will you break even? Okay, so in other words, are you ever going to make enough money to make up your $500? So X is going to be your backpacks. C is your cost to make and R is your revenue. So before you spend any money at all, or before you make any backpack at all, you're, you have to spend $500 just to get ready to go. And you have not made a single dime. But when you sell your first backpack, you have to spend another $15 just to put $15 of material into there. So you have to spend your $500 plus 15 more, but you do get to make some money. You're going to make $15. And then we're gonna continue on that pattern. So your second one, you have to put $15 more into that backpack. So that would be 530. And, but you made $15, so you made $30. So this is going up by 15 while this is going up by 15. Sounds good. So this here, you had to spend 15 more dollars and you earned $15. The question becomes, are, is this here growing fast enough that it will ever overtake this? Well, at 10 backpacks, 15 times 10, that's how much more money you had to spend. That would be 150 more dollars. So you spent $650, but you made money. You made $150. You're still in the whole $500. Each time you're in the whole $500. It doesn't look like you're ever going to make up your $500 of your initial cost. Why is that? Well, think about the fact that what's really going on with X every single time. Well, your cost, was that initial $500 plus the 15 for every backpack. Your revenue is 15 for every backpack. Remember Y equals MX plus B? Your slope, in both of these, your slope is 15. So are you ever going to make back your money? No. You need to start charging more for your backpacks. Your charge for your backpacks needs to be more than what it costs you to make it. So the cost to make the backpack and the revenue for selling the backpack, they're the same. So they're never going to be able to make back that $500 so that they can break even.